What's going on everyone, Mario here with Nickel Prints, and in this video we're going to be covering the top 5 t-shirt printers that you can use to start printing t-shirts at home. I'm going to cover specifically printers. I am not going to mention cutters. The reason for that is because cutters aren't necessarily printers, unless it's a print and cut. That's not to be confused with the Cricut print and cut, where you print using your own printer and then you cut it using the Cricut. A print and cut machine does both printing and cutting. So it'll print the image on the material and then it'll cut it. So things like the Cricut or the Cameo are not going to be in this video. Now the printers in this list are going to get progressively more advanced, so you can either start off with some of the beginner printers that I'm going to talk about at the beginning, or if you really want to just dive head first, or if you're already ready to upgrade, you can check out the printers that I'm going to mention towards the end. Either way, whether you're just starting off or you're already a veteran in the t-shirt game make sure to watch this video all the way through so you can get the most out of it before we get started if you haven't subscribed already make sure you do so if you like informative videos in the t-shirt business and crafting game in this channel we cover tips tricks strategies how to make money pretty much anything that has to do with t-shirts heat presses t-shirt printers vinyl cutters and more so without further ado let's jump straight into it let's go Let's go ahead and kick things off with number one, and that's going to be the Epson EcoTank printer series. Now, in the EcoTank series, my favorite has to be the Epson EcoTank 15,000. And the reason for that is because they can print sheets up to 13 by 19. Most printers are able to do 8.5 by 11 or letters or legal size, which is 8.5 by 14. But anything bigger than that, 11 by 17 or 13 by 19, usually you need a bigger printer for that. And from what I've seen from the Epson EcoTank series, the only one that can do that is the ET15000. ET stands for Equal Tank. Now, one of the reasons why I chose this printer to be one of the first ones is because the ink is fairly cheap. It is an Equal Tank series. The printer itself can run about six or seven hundred dollars, but it does have refillable ink, unlike other printers that use cartridges. If you decide to print T-shirts at home using this particular printer, then you're going to be limited, for the most part, to inkjet t-shirt transfers inkjet transfers like the nina 3g jet opaque paper or caesar direct vinyl now you can make t-shirts with those they do work but they don't last as long as any of the other methods in this video will now the other reason i chose the epson eco tank series for the first one is because if you don't want to use it as a regular printer anymore if you don't want to use inkjet transfers or if you never wanted to do that in the first place you can easily convert it into a sublimation printer. Now to do that is super easy. All you have to do is instead of filling it up with the regular ink, you're gonna fill it up with sublimation ink. That's all there is to it on the printer itself. Aside from that, on the computer, you will need to install something like an ICC profile to get your colors correct, but that's for a separate video. Now, my personal recommendation, if you get an Epson Eagle Tank and you do want to convert it to sublimation, don't put the regular ink in there. Don't put the inkjet ink in there because you're going to have to end up flushing it all out so that it can be as clean as possible to be able to accept the sublimation ink. It is possible. You can do it. You can fill it with inkjet ink and then just flush it all out and replace it with sublimation ink, but it tends to be a hassle. So it's better if you just completely forget about the inkjet ink and just fill it straight away with sublimation ink. Now, speaking of sublimation, that brings me to my second printer, and that is a dedicated sublimation printer. In this case, I'm gonna be talking about the Sawgrass SG-1000 because that's the one that I use, and I've had absolute great success with it. I love the quality, the colors are super vibrant, the prints come out perfect pretty much every single time, and honestly, I've never had an issue with it. The ink itself lasts fairly long, but remember while sublimation is a fantastic option to print shirts and other materials such as cups, mugs, license plates, mouse pads, pretty much anything that you can think of, it does have its drawbacks, especially when it comes to t-shirts. Remember that sublimation is specific to polyester, so you're going to need a 100% polyester shirt or at the very minimum 60% polyester, 40% cotton. And it also needs to be a light color for best results, white shirts. Now I've gone through one set of Sawgrass cartridges and the ones that I have on there right now are almost totally full. So I would say estimated roughly ballpark about 200 prints for a full set of cartridges. But then again, that also depends on a lot of factors. What colors are you using? How much of certain colors are you using? A lot of things factor into this, but just to get a general idea, 200 prints for one set of cartridges. Now there are a few other sublimation printers that you can choose. Epson, for example, does have a few different printers. And like I mentioned earlier, you can get an Epson Equal Tank and convert those as well. I personally did end up going with the Sawgrass SG-1000 and I love it. So those two are actually pretty much the basic printers that we're gonna be covering. Those are the more household printers, I guess you can say, that you can use. There are a few other inkjet printers that you can use, but honestly, when it comes to the price of the ink and the quality of the prints, it could potentially get a bit more expensive than something like an Epson Eco Tank. And at the same time, with any other home printer, home inkjet printer at least, you will end up being limited to pretty much just inkjet transfer papers, which are good to use every once in a while, but like let's say for people that want to use it for work, maybe they want to use their shirts at a restaurant or out on the field, it 
isn't the best. It will end up fading and it'll end up cracking because while it is good for short term use, for the longer term use, ink jet transfer paper isn't the best. So if you do want to take it a step up, there are a few other options. So the first option that we're going to cover in the more advanced options is going to be the DTG printer. So in our third spot, we have the DTG printer. Now, I personally use the Rico RI-1000, but there are a few other brands out there that are either just as good or a lot better. A few things to keep in mind about the DTG printer. One is the price. These typically have a fairly hefty price tag starting at around $15,000. Two is the process to print the shirts is a bit more time consuming than anything else because what you have to end up doing is on the t-shirts you have to pre-treat them so you have to spray a special liquid on them whether they be black shirts or white shirts then you have to let that dry and then you have to print it and after it's printed then you can cure it using your heat press that's pretty much all there is to it the process itself isn't that long some people see it and they think it's a lot longer or a lot more troublesome than it should be the first couple times i did it it was a bit annoying but after that it just became part of the process and honestly it just kind of became second nature so what a DTG printer is, is a direct to garment printer. And that's legitimately exactly what it is. You print directly onto the garment. This right here is a platen. This is where you load up your t-shirt and then you use that little touch screen right here to choose a file you wanna print. You send it to print and then that platen is gonna go inside the printer. And then just like a regular inkjet printer, it's gonna have the print heads, which are gonna start laying down the ink on top of the shirt. If you're printing on a dark shirt, you're gonna lay down the white ink first, followed by the color. And then if you're printing just a regular white shirt, it's only going to lay down the color, which cuts cost as well as time. In general, to print one t-shirt, it's going to cost you the price of the shirt itself. And then depending on how big the image is. So the image for me, I like to print bigger sized images. So I stick to maybe 13 or 14 inches wide by, I would say maybe about 14 inches tall as well. So that comes out to about $3 worth of ink if I use a white base, meaning I'm using a dark t-shirt. Now, if I use a white t-shirt, then it literally comes out to cents. It'll come out to probably less than a dollar, if not just over a dollar. Now into that, you also have to factor in your pre-treatment, which per shirt, I would say it's between maybe 25 cents to 50 cents, give or take at the top. So when it comes to the ink of the DTG printer, you're gonna be looking at about $60 per cartridge for the standard yield. If you want the extended cartridges, it's about double the price for pretty much double the ink. But the white ink will always run out a lot faster than all of the other inks, making it a bit more expensive because you're pretty much going to have to end up repurchasing it more often than the others. So moving on to our fourth pick on this list, and just like the DTG, it is also going to be one of the more advanced ones, and that is a print and cut machine. In particular, I'm looking at a Roland BN20. Now these start at about six to seven thousand dollars depending on the bundle that you get what this is is pretty much a cricket or a cameo on steroids so a roll and print and cut prints about 20 inches worth of material so you can do 20 inch long rolls and it also prints on them as well so what you would end up doing is getting principal vinyl printing onto that vinyl itself using the roland then the roland is going to retract the print that it did cut around it and that's pretty much all there is to it all you have to do afterwards is just weed the excess vinyl and press your shirt now, a great thing about the Roland BN20 is the fact that you can print t-shirts, you can print decals, you can print large decals like for cars, and you're even able to expand your business by selling the transfers themselves. You can either print your own designs and sell those or print custom designs for others to press. Now, finishing off our list at our fifth spot is gonna be a white toner printer. White toner printers come in a few different brands. The most popular ones have to be the Oki and the Uninet. I personally use the Uninet iColor 560, and the difference between white toner printers and a regular inkjet printer is the fact that a white toner printer uses white toner. So it actually prints the color white. So when you open up your printer, instead of having CMYK, you're gonna have CMYW. But then that leaves some people asking, how does it make black? Well, it's fairly easy. It pretty much just mixes all the different colors together to make a black. White toner printers also use toner instead of inkjet ink or sublimation ink or any other type of ink, which ultimately the cartridges themselves last a lot longer and are cheaper in the long run. The cartridges themselves though are not that cheap. You're gonna be spending about $500 per cartridge, but they do last a long time. Now, when you go to purchase the white toner, that's when it gets a bit more expensive because white toner or white ink is just more expensive to produce overall. So when it comes to actually printing a shirt, you're gonna be looking at about maybe $2 and change, depending on the type of paper that you use. When you're using a white toner printer, you are gonna use a special paper called A and B paper. What you do is print on the A paper, and then you take the B paper, slap it behind, pop it in the heat press, and marry it. What that does is add the adhesive to the print itself. If you want more detail on white toner printers, I do have a video dedicated to the Unit at iColor 560 and whether or not you should consider buying it or not. If you wanna check that out, I'm gonna have the link to it down below. 
you can pretty much learn anything that you need on white toner printers in that video. And there you have it. Those are my five best picks for t-shirt printers to start printing t-shirts at home. Once again, if you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you like informative videos in the t-shirt and crafting business and just like learning new stuff.